Good morning, guys, and welcome back to another video with me, Brooklyn. So I want to talk to you about being separated when you are trying to follow Christ. You know, sometimes Christ will separate you from people. It could be family members, friends, you know, associates. He will separate you sometimes so he can get you to the place that he can catapult you into your destiny. A lot of times he has to get you quiet and by yourself so that he can talk to you and he can deal with you and he can open up your wisdom and your knowledge and understanding so that you will know which way to go to get to where he wants you to get. So if you are in that season, don't look at it as negative. Try to look at it as a positive thing. I've had that to happen to me and I firmly do believe that that's the season I'm in now because people that I thought that would never stop associating with me and talking to me, um, my phone stopped ringing, you know, I had friends that were call, you know, that were call every day and, but they stopped. It's not necessarily that you had done anything. I haven't done anything. It's just that sometimes God just wants you to be able to talk to him and not your friends friends and family about situations going on in your life because at the end of the day they can't help you they may give you their opinion and they may say well you know if it was me i'd do this it was me i'd do that but at the end of the day god might not want you to do them things like that he may want you to do uh something totally different he may come and tell you to go a whole different direction than what your friend or family will tell you to. And it's only to get you to trust him more and to get you to be able to go into the next phase of your life, you know? And a lot of times we're used to pick up the phone, calling people and ask them their opinion. And there's nothing wrong with having someone to talk to. There's nothing wrong with that. But sometimes he separates you from that so that he can get you to depend on him more, you know? And you have to learn how to just lean on him. The Bible says, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. In all your ways. It doesn't matter what it is. And you may not get the answer right away. I have experienced that. I have asked God for something and I think it's time and it don't be time. You know, he knows the best time and I have to, this video is encouraging me too. A lot of times I go back and I watch my videos and I, I'm like, you know what? I need to practice what I'm preaching. You know, God gave me that word, but it's also for me. You have to be able to, um, to teach yourself, you know, and give yourself encouragement and give yourself some wisdom and some knowledge, and some understanding. You have to seek it. The Bible says, ask for it, you know? And I was just thinking this morning, that I just noticed, you know, that people just will move on. And, and sometimes they're going through things, but I think if it's hitting you all at once and people are just dropping off and you notice you have not offended anybody, it could be because you're in the season of separation so God can get with you, talk to you, and send you into your next into the next part of your life, your destiny. Sometimes he has to move people because you won't move. If he wants you to do something, you won't move if you have different people in your circle. You know, you're concentrating on family members, people that need help. You're concentrating on friends who have marital problems, who's going through this and that. And you can't focus on yourself because you're giving yourself to everybody else. And sometimes God wants to give you something. He wants to help you. He wants to set you on high. He wants to deliver you, but he can't get to you because you're focusing on other people you know and yesterday i did a video and it was three steps to getting closer to christ but it wound up being five steps because the more i did the video the more things kept popping into my mind but the three major things is fasting prayer and reading those are the three major things that you need to do to get closer to christ even if it's fasting once a week for four hours breakfast till lunch or you know, 6 o'clock p.m. to 6 o'clock a.m., that's 12 hours, you know, but you need to give some some dedication and you need to uh, be willing to sacrifice, you know, and trying to get yourself in that realm where you can hear his spirit, you can hear his voice, you can follow his leading. I remember there has been times in my life that 
I did not think that I was where I supposed to be spiritually. And well, matter of fact, I, I feel like I knew I wasn't where I was supposed to be spiritually. But I'm going to tell you one thing. He would just lead and speak to me in my ear and lead me to do certain things. And it would work out to be 100% perfect. You know, so sometimes you may not think that you're where you're supposed to be, but he knows that you're where he wants you to be and he can deal with you. And sometimes with that comes separation, you know, sometimes with that, it comes being alone, you know, and read about Abraham, you know, how the Lord told him to leave his family. Homeboy bounced, you know, and he, he took a family member with him, Lot. And it was a mess. You know, he had to rescue Lot. And, you know, you have to sometimes go by yourself. You know, sometimes you have to go by yourself. And do what the Lord has you to do. And if you are in the season of being alone. And like I said, you can have family. You can have a husband, wife, children or whatever. But sometimes the Lord still separates you. He's not going to break up your home. But I'm saying he can still separate you spiritually so he can get you to the point that he can deal with you about whatever's going on in your life and what he has for you to do, you know. Or if you're a single person, he will sometimes move family. He will move friends and things out of your life so he can get to you. It's all for your soul's sake. It's all for your soul salvation and for you to have an expected end. You know, he says he knows the plans that he has for us. Not to hurt us, but to prosper us and for us to have an expected end. You know, and sometimes we don't ever reach our potential. We don't reach our destiny. We don't have the things in life that we supposed to have that he has mapped out from us before we were even conceived. Because we never get to that place where he can talk to us and he can lead you and guide you. You know, you have to get in it, into that place where he can tell you where to go, where to step your foot. Read through the Bible. He told them where to go. He told them where to step, you know, literally. And he can do the same thing for you, whether it's just leading you. I remember one time I was looking for some purple bar stools, them retro bar stools, you know, and I looked online. They were rather expensive. So I remember one day I went to a, a consignment shop, a really, really nice upscale consignment shop. And when I went into the consignment shop, I just couldn't leave. I was walking around the store. I had done been around that store 10 times and it was nothing there that I, that I needed. I had something in my hand. I was skeptical. I was like, should I buy this shit? And I, and something just kept telling me to walk around the store. Just keep walking around the store and just look, don't leave. Every time I was getting ready to go check out that little bowl in my hand that I really didn't want, something would lead me back around the store just to look. I couldn't never make it to the cash register. I put the bowl down and I was going to leave. And I couldn't never make it out the door. Something just kept me in the store. So finally, it's like something had a hole on me, you know? And so finally, I was released. I was like, huh, I'm leaving. As I was leaving, going to the, the exit, there was two purple retro bar stools sitting at the cash register. Excuse me, I'm spitting. At the cash register. I was like, those were not there. Now, mind you, I had done walked around that store past that cash register 50 gazillion times. And I asked the lady, I said, these were not here. She said, oh, no, somebody just dropped them off. And I was like, really? They was brand new. I said, well, I'm, I want them. She said, well, I don't have them priced yet. They just dropped them off. I said, well, you need to please, when you get them priced, call me. I said, because I've been looking for something exactly like these. At that particular time, because that was my decor. That's not my decor now. But I was like, and I really, really uh, would like to have these. And that same day, she called me and priced them. And they were under $200, which online, they were over $200. They were under $200. And I went and got them the next morning. So he led me because he gives you the desires of your heart, no matter how small it is. You know, he wants you to have things that you want. That's just something small, you know, that I can talk about. Um, one time I wanted a three bedroom apartment. I had a two bedroom apartment. It was beautiful. And I wanted a three bedroom apartment with a sunroom because my two bedroom had a balcony and I'm not an outside person. I'm not sitting outside with all them darn bugs. So I wanted a three bedroom apartment. It was coming up on my lease to end. And 
I was out looking and I had been online and the particular place I wanted to move said they didn't have any three bedroom openings, right? So I called them. They said they didn't have none. I went by there. They said they didn't have none. And online, they said they didn't have any. So I went around to different locations, looking, 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 couldn't find anything. And the spirit spoke to me and said, go by the place that you really want to go by, that you re really want to move to. Go there. And I was like, that just don't make no sense. I done been online. They don't have none. I called them. They don't have none. I'm not going by there. I rode up and down the street, but my car, for some reason, I just kept turning my car back around going to that particular apartment complex. So I get to the, the, that complex and I go inside. I talk to the, rent, the, 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 to the manager and she says, well, I'm sorry. She said, I know your name was on the list for a three bedroom, but we rented it. She said, we couldn't contact you. And I was I was pissed because I was like, uh, you have my phone number. And not only that, I'm living in your sister apartment. The same property, just at another location. In a two-bedroom. So you could have, you know I was renting from the same property manager, just in a different location. Their sister location. So y'all could have reached out to me, but it wasn't meant for me to have that particular place. Apartment. So I wanted to be on the third floor. That was on the second floor, blase, blase. So it wasn't even meant for me to have that one anyway. So I said, well, if you get something, just, you know, remember uh, to call me. So I I was leaving disappointed. I was like, I knew I shouldn't have stopped by here. That was just me thinking that, to go back and stop. Before I can get to the front door, she said, oh, well, we have a, a, a three-bedroom coming open in about two months. Do you want that one? And I was like, uh... Yeah, she said, we don't have nothing now. Now, mind you, when I was talking to her, she was saying, we have nothing. We tried to contact you. We couldn't, so we rented it. She didn't try to contact me. But we tried. We rented it because we couldn't contact you. It was on the second floor, three bedrooms, sunroom, everything I wanted. So she said, oh, we do have one coming open in about two months if you want that one. She said, and it's on the third floor, just like you want. And I was like, what? She said, yeah. She said, I just thought about it. The Lord sent me back there and i went in there signed the paperwork and with my lease in i moved into my three bedroom apartment with a sunroom and the two bedroom that i was in that apartment was 303 how about when the lord gave me the three bedroom the two bedroom was apartment 303 when the lord gave me the two the three bedroom how about that apartment was 303 as well okay but he led me there and then she told me, she said, yeah, we got one coming open. On top of that, I didn't have to have a transfer fee. A lot of times when you transfer from one apartment to their sister apartment, they transfer, they charge you a transfer fee. They didn't even charge me a transfer fee, you know? So he can lead you and he can guide you to do things. Somebody, somebody might say, that's just little. What about the big things he can lead you and guide you to do? He can. At that particular time, that's, that's the level of faith and the level that I was at. Some After that, he'll move you up. And then you'll be in a different space. In a, and he'll lead you to higher and greater things, you know? So we have to keep that in mind. And at that particular time, I really wasn't in the season of alone a separation, you know what I'm saying? But I was at that place that he, I was suscept, I was open to be able to be led and I could hear him and I didn't miss out on my blessings. Sometime, and the price was right. It was a three bedroom apartment. Altogether, it was 10 rooms. That was a huge apartment and the the the, the rent was only $1,000 and it was beautiful. It had a movie theater on the property for us to be able to, um, you know, do movie parties. It had it, it was like a movie theater on the property that belonged to the community, that particular apartment community. Pool, clubhouse, it was a luxury apartment. And it was a thousand dollars a month. And I had 10 rooms. I had a laundry room, two full bathrooms, three bedrooms, a dining room, and a kitchen. It was huge. And um, I moved, you know, inflation. But my point is this: God can lead you and guide you but you have to be susceptible you have to be able to hear his voice and sometimes he puts you in a, a position excuse me a position a position to where he wants you to be alone so that you can hear him and you won't hit you won't get the static you will hear him 
And see, I was able to be able, whew, I was able to hear him. I was in that position and I was able to hear him. And even though those were not something somebody may say of great magnitude, at that particular time in my life, it was of great magnitude for me because those are something those are things that I really wanted and believe it or not God is concerned about little things in your life that you want he's concerned for things that you like he, okay you have a child you want your child to enjoy life you want them to be able to be a cheerleader in school play basketball football if you have a daughter get her nails done her hair done have her little sleepover pajama parties you want your children to enjoy themselves it's not always business that's how our father in heaven is we have to be about his business right we have to tell people thus said the lord but he also wants you to be able to enjoy yourself he made things down here for us to enjoy he gave people ideas and created things for us to be able to go and have those things and to be able to enjoy ourselves. It ain't just always business. It could be the littlest things. Lord, I love jewelry. And he, next thing you know, you walk up with somebody who's selling jewelry that you like, that you can afford. You know, Lord, I like um, lashes. So did he make it affordable for you to be able to go get lashes? Or Lord, you know, you could be a man. Lord, I love trucks. Did he make it to where you can go to truck shows and you make him purchase a new truck? He, he wants you to enjoy yourself too. It's not always business. Sometimes it is pleasure. You know, I'm sure when Jesus Christ walked this earth, I'm sure he had some pleasure. He was about his father's business, but I'm sure he had fun with his friends. He said that he had friends that he loved. So I'm sure that he hung out with people, you know, his disciples. I'm sure they had fun without doing anything wrong. I'm sure they laughed and ha-ha and he he sometime. He went to a wedding. That's fun. You know? So it's not always business. So those little things that he that he was able to lead me to do, and it's been several examples that I do have. I just use those two. But they may seem little to somebody, but he cares about the little things. That's why he said in all your ways, not just the important things, in all, in all your ways, excuse me, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Okay. So I'm going to end the video here. And with that being said, I'm going to say, Phil Donke, I keep spitting. My teeth are big. I'm going to say Phil Donke. That's thank you very much in German. So Phil Donke for watching me. And choose. That's what? That's by in German.